In this episode, I want to talk about shielding, shielding wood stoves. You'll know that if you follow me on one of the platforms that I put these videos on, that I talk a lot about wood stoves. And I do that because I want people to understand how it's done. There's a lot of false information out there about how you can do things. And I want to show you today using the manual. So this is the wet manual that we use here in Canada. And that's our standard and we follow that and we follow the rules and the regulations set up by that and other uh, v365 and so on but we're just going to talk about one particular aspect of the requirements uh, the minimum requirements and remember that's what this is this is a minimum requirement to keep your stove safe if you want to go beyond the minimum that's great but don't go below the minimum because you don't know for sure if it's going to be safe so in today's episode, I want to talk about shielding. Now that doesn't apply to pellet stoves. And the reason I'm doing this video in front of the pellet stove is just for background ambiance and just to talk about uh, the comfort that you would achieve from a wood stove. But if you're like me, you love the heat that comes off a wood stove. But again, you have to be safe. And that's why we want to talk about the minimum requirements. So we're going to look in the manual here and open it. And we're going to go to the clearance section. Right here, and we're going to talk about the different types of shields you can put on your stove. I have a couple of videos from a couple of uh, inspections I've done recently, so I'll show you in real time that um, and try to help you understand how to shield your stove. I get a lot of calls, people ask me, uh, What is this deal about shielding the stove so I can move it closer to the wall? And that's what we're going to talk about in particular. We talk about the different types of shields the different clearance uh, reductions you can you can achieve and the minimum standards so for instance the minimum standards for most shields uh, would be that it's spaced off the wall it's up off the floor a little bit it's a certain distance above the stove and it's it goes beyond the corners of the stove if it's, if it's in a corner all of those things are going to get covered in this video and i hope it's going to be helpful so let's get started and take a look in the manual so we're looking at the Wood Energy Technical Training Reference Manual. So when you open that, you can see that there are multiple tabs that you can look at. Today we want to look at shielding, as I had said. So the big thing with shielding is that you do the shield in the proper way. And this manual talks about the hearth underneath that's part of a shielding of the stove, but we don't want to talk about that in particular right now. What I really want to talk about is the shield itself behind the stove. So this is going to allow you to push your stove closer to the wall. And depending on the materials you use, that's going to allow you to push the stove uh, different distances from the wall. So you can see here, it talks about air cooling, and that's the whole reason for this shielding uh, allowance is that if you put a shield in you allow the air to move behind the shield the heat is reflected off the shield and that keeps the wall cool if you look over here you can see how they do that so you got a combustible wall with drywall on it and in this case if it's drywall then the drywall is also considered combustible what you have to do is you have to put standoffs behind the shield that are non-combustible so they're, they're designed to take the heat without, um, without catching on fire, essentially. So that standoff must be a minimum of 7 eighths of an inch. So most, most of the time I just say 1 inch off the wall. Okay. Then, if you want to, you can use different materials. So here's the table of the B365 that shows you what you're allowed. If you want to pause the video and, and read this, you can do that. I'll try to make it readable. So essentially what you can do is you can use a piece of sheet metal 
and it tells you the minimum thickness and so on. You can have this made up. Uh, what I would normally tell people is to hem the edges so it's not sharp and make sure that it's stiff enough that it does not floppy. If you put that on there, then you can get a reduction of 67% on the wall and if you needed to shield the ceiling, you could get 50% reduction on the sheet ceiling. There's a difference because the heat rises to the ceiling and that's why you get less re reduction on the ceiling. You could use ceramic tiles on non-combustible material like a cement board. That would only give you 50% reduction. Again, it still has to be one inch off the wall and 33% reduction at the ceiling. So on this next one, you can see that it's ceramic tile with a piece of steel or metal included behind the non-combustible spacers, you get the 67%. So slightly different, again 50% at the ceiling. Uh, brick spaced out uh, 7 eighths of an inch away from the wall. So this is a, a fairly heavy shield, but again you only get 50% reduction for that. The, the uh, piece of metal will reflect the heat better than the brick. So a brick with a minimum spaces uh, and a piece of sheet metal, you get 67%. You can't, of course, do that on the ceiling. So again, if you want to pause the video and read this yourself, you can do that. So if we look over here, it explains how the brick or the shield of whatever type of shield you use, how it works. It it's, works by convection. So the hot air goes in the bottom and rises up and comes out the top and creates a convection current. Just make sure that your spacers are non-combustible. The reason for this is the fact that this stove was built and in order to get a label put on the back of the stove, they had to take it to a test lab and in the test lab they put it in a cubicle. The cubicle has sensors in the cubicle in the walls in various positions around the stove. And in order for that stove to get the label, it has to the manufacturer has to say, if you put the stove in this position inside your cubicle, it will not set off any of those sensors on the wall. So, in this case, in order to pass that test, they had to pull this stove 24 inches away from the back wall. And that's the only dimension I want to talk about for this video. In this case, because they wanted this stove not in the middle of the room, obviously, they decided that they wanted it closer to the wall. This is the one provision you can do to make sure that to move the, the stove closer to the wall. The, the, the concern, of course, is that the wall will overheat with the heat from the back of the stove. If the sensors were in the wall, it would set the sensors off. By putting on a metal shield like this, you can reduce the clearances from 66%. In this case, it's a 66% reduction. So what's that, 16 inches? reduced so you could get this stove to within eight inches of the wall. The thing with the shield is it has to be on non-combustible spacers and you can see he's used copper spacers here. They don't like you to put the screws directly behind the pipe because this screw will get hot from the pipe itself, transfer the heat in. So they like you to offset those screws. It should be one to three inches off the floor. It needs to be 18 inches past the side of the stove. In this case, the shield's too small, but we're not going to talk about that at the moment. It has to be 20 inches above the stove. So 1 to 3 inches off the floor, 18 inches past the sides, and 20 inches above the stove. If you were doing a ceiling uh, shield, it would be similar type measurements. One thing that people get wrong is when they put the stove on an angle, say in a corner, then you have to measure 18 inches past the front corner of the stove. So, you know, if the, if the corner of the stove was sitting sitting right here, a lot of people will just put the shield straight back from the corner, but then you have to add 18 inches to it. So some stoves are not designed to go in certain places, like for instance, if, uh, if there was a window here, the shield would have to be so large it would be past the window, and it just wouldn't look right, so you'd have to ideally get a different stove. And that's it. So that's just a few things that you can do to make sure that your stove doesn't take up half the room. Hopefully this has been helpful.